right, this is Michelle from Sweets and Soaps, and I'm doing a video, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a, video re a video response to Shy Light 86. And you guys got to excuse me for my hair. I do need a perm. It's looking a little nappy around the edges. Woo. Anyways, um, she's at, back on the 12th of October. She sent me an email or messaged me or left me a comment. Wanted to know what equipment um, in the process of making cold process soap or hot process soap. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just give her some ideas on things that I use. Not necessarily the right things, but I use them. And they work for me. <coughs> Excuse me. Now on the internet, there are, you can type in how to make um, cold process soap. And you'll get a lot of um, hits in regards to how to make the cold process soap or hot process soap or whichever soap you want to make. Anyways, for me... I use, um, I wrote it down because, you know, I can't remember everything. But anyways, um, my supplies consist of a digital scale. Um, those are the best to have. You want to make sure that your scale at least scales to 0 .01 or 0 .001. Um, and the reason why I say 0 .001 is because sometimes when you are calculating your lie that you need to use in your soap the um, lie equation, the lie you may, it may come up like 14.682 so and really that point two doesn't really make that much but it does so you know unfortunately mine doesn't go to have a point zero zero one it goes to point zero one so I'm looking on Excuse me, getting me another scale. Anyways, I'm sorry for the background. I got my dishwasher on and I have somebody in the living room listening to some music. Anyways, um, I also use um, oh, my scale measuring cups. Um, not necessarily, because when you're weighing the water, you can either weigh the water or you can use a measuring cup to measure the water. And it would be the liquid measuring cup, not the ones for dry ingredients. Because um, in baking, there are two different types of measuring cups. You have your one measuring cup where you do actually measure um, liquid, which if you go into a store, you'll see the liquid cups are the ones that are made by Pyrex. And it is usually from one cup to four cups, and it's glass or plastic. Um, and the dry measuring cups are the ones that you can buy and it comes with a one cup, a half, a three quarters cup, a one, a half a cup, a quarter, and three quarter, and a yeah, one third cup. And those are usually sold in a set, and so you want to know the difference between the two. Okay. Um, also, I um, have two pitchers. One I measure, um, or I use to measure the liquid. In so on those ones and and those are the ones I do add the lie to. So those ones are specifically only used for soap making. They are bright pink. The kids know and everyone knows these are what I measure my lie in because I bought them and they're bright pink. And they're great for the size soaps that I make since I don't make seven or eight or nine pound blocks. It's big enough. To hold all the ingredients, I need up to I think five, uh, five pounds of soap. But I only make like three to four pounds of soap, so it works great. Anyway, so I have two different pitchers because I make two lye solutions at one time. You know, or I could make more, but just two is what I work with. Um, I also have another little cup that I use to measure the lye on. Um, and that one is strictly for lye. It's an old, um, I have a yogurt cup and an old um, uh, soap container. I mean, not soap, but um, butter container I use to um, weigh my lye out because it's thin and it bends. Like, so when I'm pouring it, you know, you can use, you know, whatever you want. You can measure it in glass, you can measure it in plastic, you need to measure it in a plastic bag. You can do that. It's, it's up to you. <clears throat> Um, again, I'm not saying these are the right things, but these are things that I use and I don't have a problem with it. Um, I also um, 
got to make sure you have your safety equipment, like your goggles. I wear glasses. I, I, I probably need to use goggles, so I'll mess those up. <laughs> Um, gloves, I just go to the 99 cent store, the dollar store, and I buy the dollar gloves, the yellow ones. Um, if you want to get all technical, you can go online and you can buy some little thick ones, you know, whatever. That, that's up to you. I wear old clothes when I sew. Um, you can use an apron. Um, since I'm using old clothes, I really don't use aprons because aprons I use to cook with, so I don't want to mess it in. Plus, mine are all old and cute. Um, and they also, you should also wear some kind of shoes, not thongs. I mean, when I soap, I don't wear shoes. That's bad because if I was to spill some lye on the floor, ow, you know, it's on my foot. Now I'm getting all jacked up on the bottom, okay? But shoes are a good thing. Um, I'm going to start wearing shoes now. I, since I just mentioned that, I don't want to have no accidents and jack my feet up. Um, <clears throat> uh, you also need a candy thermometer or a digital thermometer because your mess you want to at least make sure that your thermometer goes up to 200 degrees and as low as what 60 70 degrees it, I mean you know a, 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 a candy thermometer some people use digital thermometers I mean you know just make sure you get the right one uh, I did mention measuring cups you like if you want measuring spoons you got measuring spoons um, I would say when you use when you're mixing your lye or using anything in, in the soap um, making process, I would say do not use anything aluminum or copper. Okay, stainless steel, stainless steel, stainless steel. I cannot stress enough stainless steel or plastic or glass. Glass unless it, it has to be tempered glass. Use for cooking up the heats to get at least up to 250. I would say um, would work great. Um, I would also mention um, having long mixing spoons like the plastic ones you can get from um, Walmart in a little package and use that for a dollar. You can use all those for um, soap making, for stirring up your lye, um, for mixing and also stirring your soap solution once you know you, you add your lye to your, um, your oils and mix them. Um, those are things that I use if I've left out anything. Um, you guys uh, leave it in the comments. You know that's what I use. Uh, also, you gotta have a good. I forgot. Gotta have a good recipe. Uh, those that's important because otherwise you don't know how much lye to use. So um, I would say get. Um, there are many websites online that you know have recipes. Um, you could go. There's Miller Soap. Um, they have a lot of recipes that have that use um, certain oils um, or you can just um, type in Google um, how to make soap or soap making recipes and yeah, I'm gonna pull up a lot um, there's also a lie calculator and you want to use that when you want to make your own um, recipe using your own oils um, the best thing I say to use is a lie, a lie calculator and you can just type in lie, L-Y-E calculator and it will bring up a gang of um, websites who have those and find one that works best for you. I can't remember which one I use but it's like one that's really in depth and it has all this. It tells you, oh I can't remember, but um, and my, unfortunately my computer is down so I'm using my daughter's laptop and I didn't save a lot of stuff on her laptop so now I gotta go back and find it but anyways um, that is just some of the stuff I use um, when I started out making so I went to the grocery store I shopped at the 99 cent store because uh, here where I live in um, California in the Central Valley the 99 cent store sells um, olive oil the pomace olive oil 99 cents you get about seven it says eight and a half ounces but I think I measure around seven seven five ounces of um, olive oil pomace so you know you could buy a few of those they also have some sunflower there they also have um, vegetable um, but that's where I started I use lard um, I use vegetable shortening um, they also sell, of course, you know, there's a lot of oils that they have at the health food store. 
Um, for fragrances, I just went to, sorry, went to Michael's and I bought fragrances from Michael's and um, which is a craft store or there's a holly hobby somewhere where you guys live but here in fresno we don't have one we have michael's um and i just bought some fragrance from them and you know i use that to start off and then as i you know that was a long time ago because i've been making soap for well over six seven years now could be more than that um but it's, i was an off and on soap maker so i had supplies you know and then I went online and I started ordering um, sample sizes, like from um, Candle Pro, or it's, that's what Candle Pro, which I can't remember. Well, anyways, <laughs> there's a lot of places. So I hope that gets you started. And then um, I will be making some more soap. And I'll show you some of the processes that I use and how I make my soap. So. I hope this helps. Uh, again, if you guys have any suggestions or if I left anything out, you guys just go ahead and just put it down there in the comments to help the little lady out. Shylight86, this is for you. And I, if you have any questions, girl, just hit me up and um, I'll see what I can do about answering. And again, I'm sorry for taking so long. Like I said earlier in my last two videos, I, you know, just moved and we just got situated and. Of course, I'm still putting stuff away, but I put majority of stuff away, and I'm able now to just start focusing on making my bath and body products. I got more stuff that I need to put in my shop. Um, it's really barren there, and it, it looks it looks horrible. So I'm getting these soaps cut up that I have, and making my bath salts and bath bombs and bubble bars and. My whipped shea butters and my body mousse and also made some cream soap and I got some sugar scrubs coming out. So anyways, um, if you got any questions, again, just hit me up and I'll get at you. Alright you guys, have a good day. Bye.